What's up, guys? It's Justice. I'm working on this GT4 RS. <laughs> I can't tell the difference, dude. They look the same. They look, huh? Yeah, it looks badass, but I don't know, like, why? <laughs> the like to me, the windshields are the exact same, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm tinting the windshield. This is Crystalline 70. Uh, I'm getting everything set up. 3M Crystalline is a super high heat rejection film. It's uh, what we consider like an optical film. It actually, uh, like it has an amazing heat rejection, 99% UVA, UVB, uh, IR rejection in the 90 percentile. Um, we're doing the 70% on this windshield. The 70% is almost completely clear. So it's actually the same darkness as clear glass. So it'd be like just layering another layer of glass on there. It gives you 100% visibility still, but it gives you amazing heat rejection properties. And so if you're a new owner, you just got your Porsche, it's beautiful, you wanna keep your interior nice. The one thing that's gonna destroy your interior faster than anything else is the sun's rays. So you need something that has uh, not only a high UV rejection, because UV rays are the number one rays for damage to your interiors. Uh, you also need something that has a high infrared rejection. Whenever you're looking to, do, to get your car tinted, it's, in my opinion, just not enough to just do the sides and the back window because not only is your dash here and your dash has so much visibility of the sun, you're also sitting right there by the windshield. And if you're not protecting your dash, you're not protecting yourself. And this is the largest pane of glass on the vehicle. So it's something I always recommend tinting. And not only that, it looks cool. <laughs> right now we are heat shrinking the crystalline because this film comes out on a long flat sheet. The windshield's curved. So we actually have to curve the film to the glass the install will eventually go on the inside to protect the window tint from damage from the exterior, but I gotta get it to shape first. But this is one of the many times during the window film installation process that something can go wrong. Crystalline is uh, very sensitive to heat. It actually reacts differently than most window film. It makes it more challenging to install. You needed a shower. No. <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was dumb. Cool, no, I spray the air like that just so I can, uh, like any dust that might be floating around in the general vicinity gets knocked down. So this is the back roll. If the film slides, there we go, all right. Sorry, that's uh, it slid, didn't it? It's sometimes you just gotta be a little angry with it and it listens. You should hear me whenever I'm, when it's not worth cooperating at all. I say some very colorful things. I'm just glad there is an audio on people's cars to listen to all the things I say to the window tent. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then if I'm removing old window film, ooh, man. Oh, then you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not. Yeah, because with old window tint, man, you use the steamer and elbow grease, and then your knuckles get bloody, and it just like... Bloody? Yes, man. I got scars all over my hands from window tint removals. So that is a great reason why people should invest in higher quality films like Crystalline, because it has a much high, longer longevity. That's one thing that people, when people are shopping around, I think it's very important to ask about the longevity of the window film and especially ask about the longevity of the heat rejection. Because there's a lot of films on the market that start out with a really good heat rejection, but in the first couple years, it drastically drops. So you're spending extra money on a film to have higher heat rejection, and then after a year or two, it's like having a regular dyed film. It's one reason why, specific reason why we carry crystalline is it holds its infrared rejection for longer than just a couple years. And every manufacturer claims a lifetime warranty, but every manufacturer has a different list of what is covered under that lifetime warranty. So they might cover, let's just say color change for a lifetime, but they don't cover bubbling or fading. So their film is gonna bubble and fade over time. And, but they still claim that they have a lifetime warranty because they cover uh, color change for a lifetime. That's just like one of the little tricks that window tint manufacturers put out. And this is a fun fact that people don't, who window film companies don't talk about, 
is m like a majority of professional grade window film pro or products are only made to last five years because the average person only owns their car three to four years, sometimes even less. So if the window film lasts longer than that, they don't care. So there's a lot of inferior products out there on the market. So a big reason why we choose only to install the very best product on the market to prevent that. Yo, I did a bicep workout before this, so my arms should be popping right now, bro. <laughs> I work out at home. I got like a, yeah, I have like a dumbbell set bench. Uh, yeah, dumbbell set, yeah. A bench, yeah. A bunch of other stuff, a lot of resistant bands. Stuff. I can get a, like a really solid workout at home. Cool, that's why you can just pull a bar. Pull home, yeah, and come back to work? that's exactly how I spend like 90% of the gym and mess with other people. That's my main, I don't like going to the gym. The bottom of these windows, so with this tool, it has like, I can't, don't know if you can tell from there, but the, the squeegee aspect of it bends up slightly. And I gotta be real careful when I'm squeegeeing out the bottom of this window because that slight upturn of the squeegee can catch my film and completely rip it off the glass and ruin the window. That has happened more times in my career that I would like to know. <laughs> This is something I actually wondered. So I've been tinting windows for 10 full years now. And I would love to have like a, like a stat sheet of every windshield I've tinted, how many cars I've tinted, what model, year, stuff like that to see which ones are like my most commonly tinted car. I would say like the, the window that I'm always like the most comfortable with in my personal opinion is like, like actual window, like is uh, these Porsche windshields are up there. I don't know what it is about my Porsche windshields, but they always come out like so good. All right, Justice, what do you rate this windshield install? Zero to 10. Zero to 10. So this is the, uh, actually came up with a list of ones in my head, but this one I would say is a, this is a, this is a five or a six. This is a five or six? This is okay. a five or six. So this is like a good medium, the, the rationale behind that. So, and this is the same for Audi and Porsche windshields because they're almost identical, like the way they, uh, they design their moldings and everything. So this has the, what's this, what's this called? Argyle texture around it. So that adds a level of the difficulty and then how tight the edges are. Porsche is notoriously tight. So I actually cut these short for them to line up just perfect because if I get any type of like, uh, what we would call fingering or bubbling on the edges where it's butting up against the, the trim on the inside, it'll actually pull any contaminant that's back behind these panels and then totally ruin my windshield. So just having that little trick of cutting it just a hair short makes it way easier but that gives you no room for error whenever you're installing and whenever you're getting it placed because if it slides just a little bit either way you have a light gap so that's what gives it that five or six mm -hmm. and you want to say the fans for the ending well have a nice day i said it like that yeah <laughs> i thought i said it oh i thought i said it cheerfully <laughs> have a nice day uh. <laughs>